I'm going to show you exactly how to play so rare with no money at all. So rare global fantasy football is the most hyped game in the world of football at the moment, with millions of people playing it worldwide. Some of them quite famous faces within the world of football. But the first thing everyone asks is, can I play this game for free? And can I play it for free and still make some money? Now, I've been playing this game since there was like 800 people here or something like that, 800. So if someone knows what all the tricks of the trades are and exactly how amazing you can really make a Soria Club today out of all the free stuff that's available, it's me. In this video will be my four steps to being a fully fledged, free to play, so rare player who understands the game and knows what's going on and has a handle on where their club is going for free with no money. Now, there's only three rules on my channel. You can rewatch the videos as often as you want, stay out of trouble, and of course, at any point in the videos, if you do laugh, you learn, you like something or whatever, then drop a like and leave a comment and let me know what it was. And let's get stuck into it. Now, before you even get started, there's a huge pitfall awaiting you. If you were just to go on to Google or just go to SoRare.com and just make an account, you're not entitled to anything for free. I've been making content for the last three years, helping thousands of people play SoRare. And SoRare love the content here at Quinny3001, so they support me by giving me a special link. It's in the description of this video, and it'll also be in the pinned comment as well, so you can't miss it. Now, that link is always loaded up, no matter when you come to the channel, the link is always loaded up with the best free stuff available for any new account signing up. So it's always the best way to sign up. And right now it will get you a free limited card once you've bought five from the market. In this video today, we are focusing on playing it with no money at the moment, but you do want to have this locked in the background so that when you do get up and running, you've got it there in case you want it or need it. The first thing you're prompted with when you open up is what sport you're going to play with. And this is what's going to dictate any future free cards you get from Soria thanks to clicking on that link. So if you're here for football, click that. If you're here for NBA or MLB, of course, go and do that. Now, the actual onboarding system at the moment on SoRare is all focused around the Global Cup. So it's a total draft system. We've dedicated other content to that. And as you're watching this and now, the onboarding system will probably be very similar. But the name of the game in the early stages with the commons, and I'm going to show you shortly how you work this out for yourself, is you want to get the best players you possibly can, quite obviously. But there's some key dynamics in the gameplay that you won't know about yet. So if the World Cup's still on, pick the best players for their clubs. Just forget the countries now, I would say at this point. And then when when you come onto your home screen here, you'll see if you've clicked the link successfully and you've went through all the hoops or whatever. If you get to this stage and you don't see that big black bar saying you've been invited by an affiliate, that's yourself, 23001, and showing you how many cards to get, then it's not been redeemed against the account. You need to go back and do something again. If you do get stuck, you need any help, just obviously drop me a comment. Now that we're in, done the easy stuff. The first thing we need to do to be a fully fledged, playing this game for free and working our way up the ladder and learning the ropes is understanding where the rewards are and what rewards we are going to target. Now, when you're brand new, you're not going to be chasing down any big and powerful rewards unless you do spend a lot of money in the market. So for the most part, when you're brand new, the reward optimization is walking through the onboarding process, going through the intermediate academy, all of these different levels that SoRare have when the World Cup isn't on. I dropped a video mid-November called If I Started So Rare Today. That'll be linked in the description of this video and it walks you through every one of those steps, what's required and how it can uh, spoon feeds you all the different things you need to learn in the game in terms of the scores and configuring the team. But we always want to look beyond there, okay? Because when you're starting out your so rare club, the number one mistake that people make when they're actually building their club and buying players and bringing people in is they don't really think about what step two or three is going to look like. They're just always really concerned with buying five for as cheap as possible, getting their three limited in so they've got six cards to then play with and then going from there, figuring it out. And, you know, buying cards that are super cheap, yeah, it can work out. And I'll actually give you some suggestions of those today. But plenty of the times, they're cheap for a reason and it doesn't really work out too great. So I always recommend at this point, we're going to look at the reward pool that you dream of getting to, the reward pool that you want to target one day if everything goes well for you. Now, sorry, I'll make it dead easy to target the cards and the players that you're most attracted to. In terms of the competitions in the actual SO5 arena, Every card in the world can be won and can be played in Global All-Star. But from there, there's all sorts of different regions and categories, mainly over geography. So you've got Champion Asia and Champion America. 
But in Europe, you've got Champion Europe, which is the top five leagues in Europe, you know, France, Spain, Germany, Italy, and England. And then you've got Challenger Europe, which is every other European competition. And then we also have the under 23 division, which is any player in the world under the age of 23 as of 1st of July on any given year. So it depends on the type of football you watch, the type of football you enjoy, the players that you want to play fantasy football with. If you already know, as I'm going through those different categories, where they are, then you're already one step ahead and you know that you're going to focus primarily on Europe, America, Asia, Wonder Kids, whatever it may be. Because as we're starting with our free common cards, we don't really get much of a choice. So they are doing new innovations where you can do daily swaps on cards and get free airdrops on commons in the NBA side of things. And I think a lot of those innovations will come to football. So I think as more and more time goes on, your commons, you'll have a real wide plethora of choice. But once you start breaking into the top 1,000 positions and you're regularly picking up tier 3 and tier 2 limited cards, then the ones you're going to try and keep a hold of or the ones you're not as desperate to throw back into the secondary market, it's important you maybe keep them in the back burner for later on. Because right now, it's never been a better time to collect lots of low-scoring limited cards for two reasons they can be played in the casual division alongside your commons and really boost them up so you can get within a credible shot of getting into the top prizes there if you know your cards so having guys that are underdogs you know they're not great performers are always going to be handy to have for you as progression goes on and keeping in mind a kind of theme or a region or a genre of card that you're more interested in it may not necessarily be the one you want now but these guys will help you win the ones you want later on then that's good to always keep in the front of your mind as you're progressing forward now the first thing you can do today that will make a massive difference to everything you're doing in the market in terms of any cards that you win and you try and flip around or if you do believe in a wee bit of so rare karma like the rewards are given out on rng and they're all tiered by the quality and roughly the price of the cards but in my experience you know like there's always some funny kinks in it so players that you follow and players that you maybe own already there seems to be pensity for for them to come out as rewards so they want you to win cards that you're going to like and enjoy. And also when you're favorite in cards, so you, that, what you can see now on screen is all the football players that I follow and they just come on this list as I find them and then I follow them. Now, the way of building this list up is very easy. You just go into the little search bar at the top here. You can click on any player. You can search any player and you just click that follow button there. You've then got the option of turning notifications on them uh, for when they're going to be on auction for different scarcities, again, depending on whatever your budget is or whatever. But the reason this is so important if you're going to play so rare with no money to start out with is when you are going into the manager's side of things, if you're going to try and initiate a trade with any of the three cards that you've won, or if you are going to spend like a tenner or a fiver or 20 quid on a card, best filter you're ever going to have on the market is this one here, favorites, where you can just flip a little switch and then you're only going to see the players that you've identified and the players that you're familiar with. And then there's lots of other tabs and filters here that you can use to refine your search for specifically what you're looking for. But if you're going to be playing this for free, then time is the biggest economic factor you've got in your favor because uh, time that you can spend honing in on specific targets for the absolute minimum amount of money if you are going to go into the market and buy any limiteds is so important because when you're starting out with nothing, you're not going to be coming in and saying, I'm opening up in an account with X amount of money or whatever. The first thing you want to do with the commons and the limiteds you win is really feel your way around. And then you might start following some people. And then as you check back in on the market, you'll look at their scores, maybe look at their price. And then if you see things going like negatively, you'll then have things to pick up from and go, oh, that guy doesn't actually score too well or that guy's price has changed because of a transfer. And you'll discover so much more about how the market moves as well as what your opinion is of a player and how effective they can be on so rare. And all of these things from the favorites button are invaluable lessons and little things that you're going to get in the game that if you're playing this with no money, you cannot do without. And the fourth and final step you need to complete to be a fully fledged free to play player who knows the score and that we're missing the most crucial point. So if you've made it to this part of the video, then you deserve to see the good stuff here. You go into Google, you type in soreardata.com and then you link your SoRare account to this. Now it is completely free and what this uh, gives you access to is all the data and all the information you need for how players score points, what players do score good points, and it allows you to go in and look at all the historic information. Now, like I said in the intro, the main question everyone asks when they get to this is, can I play this with no money and can I still make money from doing it? And the answer to that, like I said in the intro, is yes, okay? But if you do want to start venturing into the, moving into the market and selling cards on, you will need to get some cards into your club to enhance the commons you've got so that when you're in that free-to-play division, you've got the best fighting chance possible. Now, thanks to our friends at SoRare Data, if you hit this scout tab up here and then go to player 
Pathfinder. You can set all the different statistics and all the different filters you could possibly want in terms of how much they're going to cost you, what scarcity they are, how often they play, how good they score. You can filter all of that. I've ran through this already. And using the concepts tab that we visited earlier, I've managed to get four players here for a combined price of about £25. Now, none of these guys are amazing. They're not a household names. They're not going to win the Ballon d'Or or anything. Every single one of them has got real demonstrable ability of getting incredibly high scores. Now, there is only four cards here, and your primary use for using these will be as a pair. You're only going to be using two of these at a time with your common cards. To get the one for free, you'll need to buy one number five, and I recommend that's maybe somebody you like as well. You don't even need to buy any of these guys here, but these are just here, for example, of for 25 quid and then go get yourself somebody else that you fancy for a fiver or a tenner. You can get five cards in for next to nothing, and they will really complement the common cards that you'll be running and help you get on there. And then once you've got your cards, all you need to do is come to your main page on so Rare Data, hit on roster prices, and then do any filters that you might want to do or whatever. And you can see exactly the current price that they're trading for on the market and you know where that's been moving over the last couple of days. So if you're picking up guys for £3 and £4 and whatever, or even £1, yeah, Rico, £1.26, David Silva, £3.27. Waiting for these guys to move up by 10% you know, isn't a very difficult thing to achieve in most cases when you're dealing with such small uh, price points. There's not really much room for maneuver. And if even if you were to sell them for a little bit less than what you initially got them for, if you've played them, and this is my attitude with a lot of limited cards in particular, but if you're getting play out of them and you're getting to use them in tournaments and you're winning things with them, then they're kind of doing their job that you've brought them in for. They don't need to be the guys you're in love with. They don't need to be the guys that you expect to go and have an amazing career but they can be the guys that didn't cost you next to nothing, helped you learn the ropes and helped you get up and started. If you have any other questions, I go live at least once a week. So just drop in on a live chat and drop me a question and I'll help you out. Hope you had fun on this one. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you later.